Well, I got a question for you. Very famous philosopher said this, man, know thyself. And who said that? Know thyself. You guys don't get to play. <laughs> Jane, Jane, here I accuse her. Yes, Socrates said that. Yes. Have you ever found out that sometimes you don't know yourself as well as you think you do? Anybody ever done something they said they'd never do? Anybody ever done something that surprised them? Interesting, interesting. Know thyself. That's not even in the Bible. It is in another way, but uh, it's important to know yourself. One of the things is it's important to know what you're capable of. Let's look at a couple scriptures here before we get into the Word of God and get into the Word today in relation to where we're at in this series. And we're dealing today, and we're, I don't have time to deal with all three temptations of Christ. I only got time to deal with one temptation of Christ today, and I'm not even going to get through all of it unless you guys want to stay till two. But in Matthew chapter 4, then Jesus, and now this is right after his baptism out of the river Jordan, then Jesus was led up in the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So we have human food that gives us sustenance, but we have the Word of God, which is our spiritual sustenance. So if you're, if you're just eating, living on pizza and, and, and the good, good stuff of this world, that, but God said you would need to live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And he's not denying that we need bread. He's saying, but yes, there is also spiritual food you have to have. So let's look at uh, James, Jesus' half-brother. He says this, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. See, many times we read this, we just read, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. And we say that constantly. But, you know, there's a precursor to that and precursor to that. And it's submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Now, now you resist the devil and he will flee from you. I know a lot of people are trying to resist the devil, but they haven't submitted to God. So say with me, submit to God. And you'll have power to resist. So those are important scriptures. And Lord, I just pray the blessing of the Lord on your reading. If you agree with that, say amen. So last week we finished with Jesus was God's gift to humanity. Jesus had become flesh, but we knew that and have found out that the flesh is weak. And Jesus told us that. And God needed to know something about this gift. Was the gift for sale? The reality is your sin and my sin trapped Jesus in a body that he'll never get out of. And what amazing price God had to pay. He had to be trapped into a body for eternity. And many times we think that redemption, and I'll tell all last believers, I'll talk about the redemption as we're getting headed into the resurrection season, is, well, my redemption began, you know, it began at the whipping post and then went to the cross. And No, I'm going to tell you, your redemption started for sure in the temptation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because in the process of the enemy failing to tempt Jesus and get him to falter, Satan made a decision, I'm going to have to kill him. That's exactly what happened in the wilderness. And Satan found some cohorts and some partners in crime to kill Jesus and actually murder him. But he realized if I can't tempt him and if I can't get him to sin, I'm going to have to kill him. And the reality is in his stupidity, he thought that that was going to get rid of Jesus. But all it did was empower Jesus. All it did was empower the cross, empower the grave, and then empower the resurrection. And I'm here to tell you, Jesus was not for sale. His character was perfect, intact, and holy, impeccable. So we have studied in this series that dominion or power without character will kill you. Jesus said the first thing I'm going to give man is image and likeness first and dominion will follow that. Character. God said you've got to have character. Do you know the dominion that God wants to give you? You need to have character and integrity to maintain it and to keep it. So you do not lose it or abuse it. Let me just talk about why. Anybody know, anybody heard of Adam and Eve? They had likeness, they had image, they had dominion and... Uh, Anybody ever heard of a guy named Samson? How about King Saul? So image and likeness, they're absolutely necessary because dominion without character is disastrous. And it's imperative that character is absolutely necessary before dominion. God says it has to be that way. Your flesh, whether you believe it or not, craves dominion. But God craves character. In essence, each and every one of us want to rule our own lives. Have you ever realized that? 
I'll just put it this way. When God tells you to go minister to that neighbor next door, you will find out who has dominion in your life. Sometimes God will ask you to do things you don't want to do. But who literally is ruling and reigning in your life? The Bible tells us we are kings and priests unto God. That means we are part of a divine order that God has put in the earth. And he has given us a power and authority. You know that kings and priests have power and authority. No matter where you look. And one of the things that, have you ever seen somebody that was so anointed of God, but they ended up destructive with their anointings? Hurting people, hurting ministries, giving God a bad name, the church a bad name? They were powerful and they were anointed. But their character couldn't maintain that. We've seen it all too often, unfortunately, in the church. So one of the things that God has used, and it's not of God. And so I, first of all, I need to understand this temptation of evil is not from God. No man can say he's tempted of God. God does not touch evil. He does not go gather up evil and put it at your doorstep. God does not touch evil. All temptation comes from the enemy, the tempter himself, and from your flesh. And I'm going to tell you, your flesh is just as bad as the devil almost at times. And the reality is you have to learn how to control your flesh and get authority over your flesh by the power of the Holy Spirit. But say with me, God does not tempt me. Well, what about that scripture in Old Testament? God, God tempted Abraham. No, the, you read that in the Hebrew. God tested Abraham. Read it in the Hebrew. Get a Hebrew Bible. And that is the correct definition of that and the rendering of that. And Jesus said there will be tests and trials. He said there will be. You live, if you're alive on this earth, there's going to be tests and trials. He didn't lie about that. And I praise God he didn't lie about that. It would be frustrating if he had said there would never be tests and trials. Then we deal with that com com constantly in our lives. Right now with what's going on in the world, it seems like there's tests and trials every day we turn around. Something new going on. But whether you believe it or not, temptation will monitor your character. And whether you like it or not, Satan will try to tempt you and your flesh will try to tempt you. And there will always be a test of your character. And you're only as strong as the temptation you face. You are only as strong as the temptation you face. I've had Christian men tell me, I would never. <laughs> King David. Okay. My God, don't, don't ever lie to yourself and don't ever lie like that and speak those kind of words. I'm going to tell you what the devil knows about you is what you say. So I, I've often thought, thought that why does the enemy know how to tempt men and women so good? Because he listens to our words. Shut your mouth, praise God, and he don't know what to do with you. So I, I want to go back and, and, and let's just look at this in the Garden of Eden. You remember Eve in the Garden of Eden? Do you know what made Eve desire that fruit? It wasn't difficult. It wasn't difficult. Here's what the enemy said. Satan came and he misquoted the Word of God. And then he said, do you want to be like God? Do you want to be like God? That was it. That, that, that was the temptation. Do you want to be like God? That's as simple as that. It's in Genesis 3, 4. I'm just going to read it to you. You will not certainly die. God said you will surely die. Satan misquoted the word back to her. And the serpent said to the woman, For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God. Knowing good. That was a temptation. It wasn't an apple. It wasn't a pear. The temptation is... Do you want to be like God? And whether you believe it or not, we all deal with that in our own lives. Are you the God of your own life? Do you run your life and tell God, uh, I'll call you when I need you? This has been the temptation of man. All. I don't need God. I'll run my own life. I will be God in my life. And that temptation, Satan works on that every day in our lives. Even if you're born again, we still have to deal with that on a daily basis. So that was a temptation. Do you want to be like God? What is God? God is power and dominion. Satan misquotes the word of God. And Eve does not correct Satan. And then she misquotes the word of God. And now Satan knows something about Eve. Now Satan knows something about Eve. Satan knows this. She doesn't completely know the word of God. She's misquoting the word of God. And the reality is Satan knows she has power and dominion over me and she's not doing anything with it. And she's not using the power and dominion God gave her over me. Did she forget it? Did Adam forget it? 
Why are they even entertaining the devil? I'm going to read a scripture that's going to prove exactly what I'm telling you. They had power and authority over this joker. And they played his game. So I'm just going to read it from the Word of God. Satan's realizing she misquotes the word. She has power and authority to tell me to get out of here, and she's not doing it. You have power and authority to tell Satan, get out of here, your life, and get away from me, and get away from my mind and my children and my family. You have power and authority to do that, praise God. Yes. Seek God first, then resist the devil. And he's like, boy, she doesn't even know who she is or what she is in Christ. I was like, Pastor Steve, prove me they had dominion. I'm going to read God's word to you. Okay? And God said, let us make man in our image. After our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth. God could have stopped right there, but he didn't. And then God makes this statement. And over everything that creepeth upon the earth. Did you hear what I said? And over every... Do, say, do snakes creep? Do serpents creep on the earth? Yes. You better believe they do. That's why they're called creepy. Satan, he was creeping in the earth. And God said, I'm going to give you power over everything that creeps. And the devil, when he impersonates, he takes a body and he impersonates a snake or whatever. He said, I've given you power over that thing that's creeping. And he said, I'm now giving you the authority and power. And then they could have, the fall never had to happen. They could have told devil, get thee out of here in the name of the Lord God Almighty. Oh, maybe I read that wrong. And over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. That fall never had to happen. And there are things in your life that never have to happen because you can trust God and His Word and use His name and His power against the enemy, His devil, and His demons. There are things that never have to happen. The fall never had to happen. Why did God say over everything that creepeth upon the earth? Do you think that God all-knowing doesn't understand what the enemy was going to try to do? And people say, you know, Pastor Steve, uh, uh, you know, uh, why, why, why does God allow the you know, enemy to come in and do that? Socrates said it best, know yourself. Temptation is not about God, it's not about the devil, it's about you knowing you. It's about you knowing you and what you're capable of so that you know how to run from it and don't let it bite you again and hurt you again. Did you ever tell your kids, don't touch the fire? Why? Why did you tell them that? Tempt temptation is not about God knowing about you. He already knows about you. It's you knowing about yourself. Mankind, know yourself. Know yourself before God. I have had people tell me, I will never. I've had, and anytime they say that, I just like, oh, Jesus, oh, my God. The devil heard that. The devil heard that. The devil heard that. I got news for you. If you get anything out of this sermon today, don't ever tell God or in your spirit, I will never do this or that. Don't ever do that. Make that proclamation in the earth. I'll be visiting down there in Holbrook probably. <laughs> so does a, ser does a serpent creep? You ever seen those things? I hate those things. The problem is I don't like any of them, so I kill them all. So that's just the reality of it. If you need a snake killed, call me. I'll come over. So they had dominion over the servant that God said, I'm going to give you dominion over that thing that's creeping. And God wants to give you dominion over the thing that's creeping in your life. It never needed to happen. What was the temptation? Do you want to be like God? That was the temptation. Not the apple. Not the fruit. And I'm going to say something here you need to understand. Satan will always tempt you with what you already have and what you already are. He will tempt you with what you already have and what you already are. So I'm going to be accurate here, okay? I'm going to prove that statement. He'll tempt you with who you are and what you already are and what you have. So, did God make Adam and Eve in his likeness? Yes or no? Yes. Did he make Adam and Eve in his image? Yes. Did he give them dominion? Yes. Were they sinless? Yes. They, were, they were sinless at first, yes. There was no sin. Sin had not crept in. Sin came in the fall. They were sinless. Okay, so they're in the likeness of God, the image of God. They have dominion, and they are sinless. She's already like God. I didn't say she was God. I said she's like God. Let us make man in our image and our likeness. But what does likeness mean? Like. She already was like God. Paul tells us, be ye therefore imitators of God. He said, be like God. This is not sacrilege. I'm not saying they were God. They were like God, made in His image and His likeness. They already were like God. And Satan asked her, do you want to be like God? She already is. 
Okay, you, yeah, I, okay I, you, you can't argue with this. Did God make Adam and Eve in his image? Yes, yes or no? Yes. In his likeness, yes or no? Yes. Did he give them dominion, yes or no? Yes. Were they sinless? Yes. The Bible tells us they were sinless. So in the image of God, the likeness of God, dominion of God, and they had no sin. Woo! <laughs> they were like God. Not God, but God said, this is what I want in the earth. I want you to represent me in the earth, and I want, when people look at you, I want them to see me. When people look at you, God says, I want them to see Jesus Christ. And so Satan's just offering them something they already are. You want to be like God? You, they already are. Uh, I'm preaching better than you're acting, but that's okay. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. We're going to be here a while. If you don't start saying yeah and amen, I'll, I'll just keep you here. Amen. Satan is tempting them. All right, we can go. Uh, I tricked you. I tricked you. Satan is tempting them with something they already are. They already are in God's image and His likeness. Power. And they were sinless. Remember what I said, you're going to remember this today, Satan will always tempt you to what you already have or are. So the greatest danger in temptation is what? Ignorance. Ignorance. They had forgot who they were. But do you know what the base word of ignorance is? Ignore. The base of ignorance is ignore. And they had ignored the word of God. I'm going to tell you, in all you're getting, get wisdom. And this is where you're going to get most of the wisdom, virtually every bit of wisdom in this earth that's going to help you get to eternity, I guarantee you that. But you want wisdom for your marriage, you want wisdom for your kids, you want wisdom for your job, you want wisdom in every area of life. It starts right here with the wisdom of God in this book. It'll always tempt you with what you already have. So they were ignorant, and they had ignored what God had said. The devil's like, I want to see how ignorant this girl is. She forgot in Genesis 1.26 where God had given her dominion over every creeping thing. I'll tell you what, of, of all the dominion I like, I like dominion over creepy things. I love that kind of dominion. I don't like spiders, I don't like snakes, and all the rest of that stuff. Flies, flies. flies I hate flies. <laughs> you can check in the New Testament, flies and who they're connected with, Beelzebub. No, the Lord of the Flies, I hate flies. They're all bugs. I, you know, when we get to heaven, I'm going to ask God, what were you thinking with those mosquitoes? I really don't get that, but uh, what were you thinking? Great. So the temptation was they were ignorant. And that was what got them. Hath God said. That's the first thing. Hath God said. I want to see how smart you are. I want to see what you have remembered about what God has said. I want to see how sharp you are spiritually, Randy. Hath God said. And he quotes word to her and he misquotes God's word. And she just lets it fly. That's why it's so important to know the word of God. So when somebody speaks the word of God or they speak over your life or they speak something, you need to either bind it or loose it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and don't let it affect your life because you didn't know the word of God and what God said about that issue. It's important you know the word of God. They were already like God. They were sinless. They were in his image, in his likeness. He had given them dominion. But ignorance will make you disbelieve God and his word and who he said you are. And who you truly believe you are. And the problem is truth and character despise ignorance. God wants you to have truth and character. So that's why God gave us character before power. So God created you and now you're born again. And now you're a new creature in Christ, a new creation in Christ. The Bible says you are regenerated in Christ, right? Regenerated. That means you, you're regen. Everybody say G-E-E-N. Not, not Levi genes, gene. God has given you the new, the new makeup in the genetics of God are now in your life. You are, a, oh, you don't believe me? You're a son and daughter of God, aren't you? Then if you're, you're a son of God, you have his DNA spiritually. You, you have to, to be a son of God. If he's my heavenly father and I am his son and you are his son. And when God says mankind, he means men and women. We are sons and daughters of God. Then I have the DNA of God himself through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ in my spirit and in my soul. Hallelujah. I'm regenerated. I'm a new creation in Christ. I'm a new creature in Christ. All things become new. I read that somewhere. I think Mark Twain wrote that somewhere. So you're born again. You're a new creature in Christ, a new creation in Christ. How many know you have a robe of righteousness that God gave you? It's not from your. It's not your goody two-shoes. It's not your good works. It's from God himself. 
How many know that God has removed sin through remission? Remission is a New Testament word. It's not an Old Testament word. In the Old Testament, the blood of bulls and goats covered sin. But the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says, removes sin. So, let's see. You're a son and a daughter of God. A king and a priest unto God. He's taken your sin away. He has given you power and dominion through the person of the Holy Spirit. You are like God. You're not God, but you are like Him and made in His image and His likeness. And He has given you dominion and He wants you to have that dominion. Say, I'm like God. I'm not preaching. So you need to get this in your spirit of who you are and who God has made you to be. The problem is most of the time the church, we don't know who we are. And one thing the devil is afraid of is the church finding out who we are in Christ Jesus. So how many are born again? New creature in Christ. New creation in Christ. You're a king and priest unto God. You're seated in heavenly places. You have the image and likeness of God. You're like God. Not God, but like him. So now, what's Satan going to do? How's he going to tempt you? And don't, don't, don't think he won't try. Don't kid yourself. I'm going to get deeper into this, of understanding how he comes against us. So he gave, God gave you his character. And now you have his power through the person of the Holy Spirit. And you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. I read that somewhere. So you're a king just like your father. Do you know your father's a king? You're a king just like your father. You're being reborn into the image and likeness of your father. But your territory is earth. So the born again experience restores the image and likeness of the garden. And it brings about the sinless character. It doesn't mean you'll never sin again. But when your sin, you ask God to forgive your sin. You know, he doesn't sit up there and think, well, you know, I, I, yeah, I'm kind of ticked at Steve because of yesterday. So I'm not going to. The second you ask God to forgive his sin, he is bound to forgive it because he said he would. And it's cast into the sea of forgetfulness. So God isn't up there with a book saying, man, I remember that what you did two months ago, Steve. So you're, you know, I'm not, I got news for you. You're sinless when you ask God to forgive your sin. You're sinless. You still have a sin nature, but you're sinless at that point. My God, do you know who you are in Christ? When's the church going to find out and believe who we truly are in Christ? So he's restored image and he's restored likeness and he's restored sinlessness. And God's original mandate is still in fact. Do you know it's still operational? There's no place in the Bible you can show me where God has refuted Genesis 126 and let them have power and authority and dominion. Earth. Show me in Scripture. Only a theologian can take that and mess that up. And he has to go to school about eight years to mess that up. <laughs> so I've learned more about myself through temptation. I've learned more about myself and what I'm capable of through temptation than any other thing. And God didn't do it, and the devil didn't do it, and my flesh did most of it. But I've learned, you know what? I'm not as good as I thought I was. I've learned that I have character flaws. I've learned I at times have character issues. You don't, don't you say nothing. I have learned. I have learned. And I'm, I'm going to tell you what it will do. It will humble you. Temptation is something that is used to keep you humble. Because I know, other than the grace of God, there go I. God doesn't need to know about me. He already knows about me. The devil, he's wondering about me. But I need to know me. Man, know yourself. Know what you're capable of. Be very careful. You might shock you what you're capable of. So I praise God what he's done. He's brought the restoration of the original, original creation. As God knew he needed to give us character with the power he was going to give us so it wouldn't destroy us. So that's why God is so interested in power. Have you ever heard that and people say that uh, all power corrupts? And absolute power corrupts absolutely? Anybody ever heard that? I used to believe that. I don't believe that anymore. Power does not corrupt. Power simply reveals the corruption that is already there. Power is pure. Power is pure. Power reveals what's inside. Power for reveals the corruption. Okay, I'll give you a guy named Hitler. Absolute power revealed the absolute corruption that was already in him. He wrote it in prison. He wrote a book called Mein Kampf. And that whole book is about the evil that was in him, the corruption that was in him. Joseph Stalin. He was already corrupt when he came into power. Mao Zedong. He was already corrupt when they came into power. It just reveals the corruption that's in them. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, well, I never had bad, every eye closed, we're good. <laughs> so I don't, I don't believe power, I believe power is pure. That electricity in there, which we call power, is that you buy your power from the electric company. That electricity is not going to jump out and come and get you, Cindy. It's pure. It knows exactly when and how to operate. A lady calls one time and she said, you need to come to my house. She said, the, the electricity is running out of my socket down onto my carpet. <laughs> so we go out there and her light bulb had burned out. She would taken it out. And she thought that the electrons were flowing out of her light socket down onto her carpet. And she thought, well, what is my meter making my meter run. And we had to explain power to her. And power is pure. Power says, if I don't have a path, I won't take it. That's how pure power is. If I don't have a path, I won't take it. If I don't have a path, I won't do it. I know how to retrain, restrain, restrain myself. Money's the same way. Money is money's not the root of all evil. I cannot believe the Christians that quote that, and it's because they've listened to too much uh, Pink Floyd and not enough Bible. Money is not the root of all evil. The love of money is. Read your Bible. I despise it when people tell me, yes, money's the root of all evil. If you come to this church, I will correct you very fastly. And I'll show you exactly in the Word of God where the love of money is the root of all evil. Money's just a tool. Power's just a tool. And God says with character, he said, it's amazing what you can do with money and power. It's amazing what you can do with money and power if you have character of God. There's some of the best, I, I, I'm just amazed at some of, the, some of the Christian colleges there are on the earth, some of the churches there are on the earth that, that are they're touching the hearts and lives of people all over the world. Money and power are not evil. They're tools. They just reveal the corruption if it's already there. So I don't believe that power corrupts. So no, the corruption's already there if it's there. So the fall of man, it distorted the image of God, to, you know, who we, who we believe God was. And what is image? Image is in the Hebrew is character. So it distorted our character and image of God. So we didn't have a correct image of ourself. So when you don't have a correct image of yourself and a correct image of who God is, guess what? You can be anybody, any place, anywhere, anytime. You can be anything. I told the guys I was skiing just, uh, this week and... Uh, there's, only, there's only two bathrooms up there on, on the top of the mountain, and, and uh, one guy was in there. He was in there way too long, and it's one of those situations where I don't even want to go in there if he does come out. And the next one, there was a woman's bathroom, and it said, women only. And I was, I was standing there, and I had, I had to go. And one guy comes in, and he looks around, and he said, well, what you doing? I said, well, that guy's dying in there, I think. I said, I, I don't know, but it's bad. I'm not, I, uh. And he looked at the open door, and he said, well, I identify as a woman today. He run none of there, and he went in the bathroom. I'm like, man, he's, he, that guy's brazen. He, he's... So, when he comes out, I'm like, well, <laughs> I got to go. And so I come out of the bathroom, and there's two women standing there looking at me. And I said, ladies, I identify as a woman today. I had to go to the bathroom, man. I don't know what happened to that guy. I don't know if he died or what. I don't know. I, never, I just got out of there. I fled the scene of the crime. I just tell you that much. Hmm. I, and and I, I just knew if he goes in there, there won't be anybody come in. But if I go in there, there'll be five women come in there and stand in that hallway looking at me. Uh, he, was, he was fleeing the scene of the crime, too. So we've had image problems every since, character problems every since. So we've been hiring all our lives. We read my lips. We we hire image consultants, <laughs> PR people. It's amazing if you go to Hollywood, you got to hire a PR person. Or nowadays, athletes have to hire a PR person. Got to man manage your public relations and who people think you are. And the reason they have to hire those people is because they don't have character. Many of them have lost it. So if you know who you are and whose you are, then you know the image and likeness of God God has given you. So I don't need to hire a character. I don't need to hire a PR person. I'm living in the image of God. I am now connected to God, and so He is my image maker. Amen. So we pay image consultants and pay them a lot of money. Pay your PR person. They create many times a person that does not exist. Nowadays, politicians have to hire PR people. Actors and musicians, unbelievable athletes. Why? Because they have no character and they have a bad image. So they hire people to tell lies about them. 
or lies for them. You ever remember a gal that was Native American so she could get into some particular college? See, God's not afraid of us having power. He's concerned with, does power have us? So I, I am Native American. So I can go to that college. See, whether you believe it or not, the world and the church are full of actors. They really are. Many just haven't been caught yet. So have you ever noticed that people in this world are not stable? <laughs> they can't be trusted. So let me tell you something. The principal trait of fallen man is unpredictability. It's amazing the people that aren't predictable anymore. I used to believe that politicians were predictable, but nowadays they're not. And the Bible says you can't even predict a double-minded double man. You have no idea what they're going to do next? Am I right? <laughs> Are you married to one? <laughs> do you know one? The whole world is struggling with character issues, flaws, and problems. The world's gone mad. But can I give you a secret? It's always been mad. Ever since the fall of man, it has always been mad. Fallen man has always been unpredictable. Fallen man has always been evil. Fallen man has always had problems and issues. This is nothing new to God. God is not freaking out like, I've never seen this kind of stuff before. <laughs> My God, I didn't know people would do that. Read your Bible. Yeah. My good, in the, old, in the Old Testament, it's like, <laughs> I think you saw it all, man. Goodness. In fact, Ecclesiastes tells us there's nothing new under the sun. So quit complaining about all the stuff. It's happened before. God knows it's happening. And he's still more powerful than all that's out there. And he's waiting for us to get in agreement with that and deal with that. And wait until the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our God. And he's waiting for us to do that. So God came to earth because he wants you to be who he created you to be. With godly character and integrity. And he wants you to make it in this world. Do you know God wants you to succeed? Do you know God wants you to succeed? How many believe God wants you to succeed? How many believe God wants you to have dominion? I, I, I can just read it in the Bible. God wants you to succeed. He wants you to be the head and not the tail. I, I'm not going to read De Deuteronomy 28 to you today. I will in this process probably. But God wants you to succeed. And many people don't believe that. Many people believe honestly deep down God has something against me. I remember, I'm not even going to go there. Genesis 1.26 is our declaration of independence. It's written by God himself. That he wants us to have dominion. He wants us to have image and likeness. So, how many know that a hammer can be destructive? Yes. But you know, how many know a hammer can be creative? Yes. I, I'm going to shock you. When my father passed away, there was one thing that all of us brothers wanted the most. Guess what it was? My father's hammer of 30 years because we knew what it had built the homes it had built the amazing homes it had built churches he had built we wanted and my, my middle brother got it Aww. not me I got the 30 out 6 but I wanted that hammer I was okay I, 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 that's okay. I, I came out okay but I wanted that hammer he has it mounted in a plaque in his office if you knew what it had built but can a hammer be destructive Give it to a five-year-old kid. My goodness, what a five-year-old kid. You, can't, you don't know the destruction of a hammer until you give it to a kid. So God wants us to be fruitful, multiply. That's his word. That's not my word. That is his word. God wants you to have power and dominion. God wants you to have assets. And God wants your character to magnify the blessings he gets, puts in our lives. And the real reality is vision without values is destiny without discipline. So your destiny depends on your character, and your character is the protector of your vision. You need to buy that and listen to that. Samson's private life dis destroyed his public vision. He was the protector of Israel, the God-given protector of Israel. Do you ever wonder why people love superheroes? All Hollywood can make now is superhero movies. That's all they can make. It's just ridiculous. Captain Marvel, Captain this, Captain that, Batman. I mean, every time you turn around, there's a new superhero. And the reason that Hollywood is superheroes is because they're out of ideas. I'm telling you that right now in many cases. But the reason people have superheroes is because they know deep down they're not one. And that's why we identify in that manner with that. Say, my image consultant is God. 
If you make God your image consultant, you will be in the likeness and the image of God, and you will never have to worry about character problems. The problem is Satan wants to be your image consultant also. He wants to take away God's image and his likeness from you. And he wants to give you his image and his likeness. So you don't have any dominion over this earth and definitely no dominion over his kingdom. He tried to do the same thing to Jesus Christ. So the first thing the enemy does is he questions the word of God. Did God say? Hath God said? Did God say to Eve? What did he say to Jesus? If thou be the son of God. If thou be the son of God. Forty days earlier when Jesus was baptized in the river Jordan. When Jesus came up out of the water. The Bible says that the heavens opened. And a voice from heaven came down and said what? This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Boom! God just told all of the universe. This is my son. And the first thing Satan comes and says. If you be the son of God. Listen, anytime you hear a voice that questions what God has said, you know you're dealing with the devil and his demons himself. Anything that questions God's word, that you know is God's word. God said three, 40 days ago, this is my beloved son. Amen. Satan knew it, but he, was, he wanted to know, does Jesus know that? Does Jesus completely understand that? And he found out, yeah, he does. He really does. He completely understands who he is. In fact, Jesus doesn't even address that question. I'm going to tell you right now, don't get into tit for tat with the devil. Are you God's son? Yes, I am. No, you're not. Yes, I am. I'm like two little boys arguing. Remember arguing about some bike or what? It's my bike. It's my bike. Dad, hey, Dad, tell him it's my bike. Hey, Dad, tell him I'm the son of God. Jesus walks right past. He doesn't, he doesn't even do it. There's some things within me you just need to right, walk right past his lies. Walk right past him and go to the word of God. What do he do? If thou be the son of God, here's what Jesus said. It is written. Amen. I'm not even going to dilly-dally with truth. You're a liar anyway. Didn't even, so let me just read it. And when the tempter came, he said, if thou be the son of God. He's offering him something he already is. He's offering something he already is. God the Father had said 40 days ago. See, if you read scripture, it will teach you how to understand when it's the enemy coming against you. You'll understand by the Spirit of God. This is the enemy trying to mess with me. If thou be anything that comes and questions God's word that is inexplicable, you know it's the devil himself and his demons. If thou be the Son of God. Hey, yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. No! If you be the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. And Jesus said, it is written. Men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And Jesus steps on a higher plane. And he says, you're talking about earthly bread. I'm going to talk about heavenly bread. But hold it. If thou be the Son of God, Jesus don't even deal with that. He knows who he is. And that's why something, you don't have to get in an argument with the devil. Have you ever seen people screaming at the devil? I've, I've seen it sometimes in church, screaming at the devil. It's like, hey, be quiet. He's saying, turn these stones into bread. I am that bread that came down from heaven. I am the bread of life. He's telling Jesus, turn the stones into bread. And Jesus said, I am bread. I am bread. You're asking me to be a cheap imitation of who I am. You're asking me to be a cheap imitation of who I am. My goodness. Turn these stones into bread. <laughs> Jesus said, my will is, and my meat is to do the will of my Father. He said, I, I, I have bread you don't even know about. Spiritual. So Satan's temptation starts with Jesus and the question of ignorance. Are you ignorant of what the Father has said about you? And he wasn't. And you don't need to be ignorant of what God has said about you. You are a son or a daughter of the Most High God of Israel, and you never ever let Satan tempt you with something different than that. So, Pastor, I, I fell last week. I got news for you. Get the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ on it. Stand up, stretch your shoulders back, and start moving forward. You are a son or a daughter of the Most High God who lives in the grace and mercy and the power of His redemptive blood. See, I know who I am in Christ. 
So every temptation within me starts with the question of ignorance of God. Are you ignorant of God's word? God had just told the universe who he was. This is my beloved son. If you be the son of God, I want you to become a cheap imitation. And what did I tell you? Satan will always tempt you with what you already are or what you already have. So the greatest temptation is always ignorance. Ignorance of God and his word. In David's temptation, what, did, what, did, what was the temptation? A wife. David already had seven of them. Do you hear what I just told you? Satan tempted him with what he already had. You need to be very careful. Satan is sly. I think he had seven or eight wives. I can't remember how many wives he had. Seven or eight. He had, yeah, he had six too many or seven too many. But Satan tempted him with something he already had. And that's when you can know when you're up against the devil. It's when he's tempting you with something you already have. Satan has never tempted me to be Michael Jordan. Never tempted me to be Tiger Woods. Tempted me to be Joe Montana one time, but I found out not even close. Satan will tempt you with what's available. What's readily and really available. He's a liar, but he's not stupid. So he'll tempt you with what's available and what is real. And that's why you need to be real careful of understanding. I know God's word. I know who God said I am. I know what God has said unto me. And I know what God's promise is for me. And I know that God, God loves me. So anything that's a, a lie about who I am, I know it's the enemy coming against me. I'm not saying you won't have tests and trials in life. That, that, that will happen. Jesus never got into an argument with the devil. I am the son of God. I am the son of God. He went straight to the word of God. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. I don't need bread. I am bread. I am the bread of life. He that cometh unto me shall not ever hunger. Jesus was saying, you're trying to tempt me with what I already am? I'm the living bread. I came out of heaven. Man shall not live by bread alone. What's he saying there? But by every word. What was Jesus telling the devil? I'm not negating the bread. The bread's real. I'm hungry. I've been fasting 40 days. I'm, I'm hungry. The man is hungry. And he's not negating the bread. But he said there's something more important than bread. The Word of God. Heavenly bread. Heavenly bread. And he said that bread is what is sustaining me right now. Not me turning these stoves into a loaf of bread. He said I, I, I'm eating the bread of my father. I'm eating the bread of heaven. Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of my Father. I got news for you. Satan can't touch the heavenly bread of God. Wow. Jesus didn't deny the aspect of the bread. What would Jesus say? And I'm not going to sell my birthright for a bowl of porridge. I have too much character for that. See, character never changes. And that's why God is a character and has character. Just like the letter one. Or the letter, excuse me, the number one or the letter A. Characters never change. Can I tell you why Joseph was never tempted by Potiphar's wife? Because he knew God had a wife waiting for him by faith. Amen. You can by faith even claim what God has waiting for you. Yes. Hallelujah. That ought to set somebody free. You can claim by faith what God has waiting for you. Right. Joseph's like a... I don't need you, girl. God has a real wife for me. Remember Asenath? God has something better than your character. You got character flaws and character issues. That's why Jesus couldn't be tempted. Here's why Jesus couldn't be tempted. Because he knew the destination was not the whipping post. That was process. He knew the destination was not the cross. That was process. He knew the destination was not the grave. That was process. Jesus said, you can't tempt me because I know the destination is at the right hand of God the Father, ever living to make intercession for you and you and you and you and each one of you sitting here. That's why you couldn't tempt him. Because he knew what God had for him. 
See, when you know what God has for you, temptation begins to fail. It begins to fade. So let me need to just put it this way. I don't need to steal from you. Because I know the wealth of the sinners laid up for the just. Amen. I know the wealth of the unjust is laid up for me. Right. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich and he adds no sorrow to it. I don't need to steal from you. Right. I don't need to steal from anybody. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. If you know these truths, it tell your kid, it'll, it'll sustain your character. I don't need to steal from you, Jack. God has enough for me. God has enough for me, Randy. I'm not going to, I'll never steal from you. I don't need to be jealous of you. I don't need to be envious of you. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. So I, 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 it's like my daddy told me, he said, he said, I'll tell you what, if you have a Cadillac, he said, bless God, I hope you get a bigger Cadillac. I don't need to be jealous of you or envious of you. Because God will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. Amen. Don't need to ask, seek money, power, illicit things. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added. You mean God has all these things for me, so I don't have to get my character all ruffled up and ticked off all the time about what you got, what you have, what I need, what I want, what I'm desiring? God has it for me? Amen. And God does love me. This I know. So we're new creatures in Christ, new creations in Christ. We've been made sons of God, daughters of God, heirs and joint heirs with Christ, kings and priests unto God. His blood has removed our sin. We've been restored in His image, His likeness. And He has a mandate. Image and likeness and dominion. So I'm just going to read it. In this series, we read that I am God, I never change. We read that out of Malachi, right? For I am the Lord, I never change. God said, what I've said, I've said it, and I'm not going to change my mind about it. I'm too much God to do that. And God said, let us make man in our image and our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over everything that creeps. That means i got dominion over the devil himself. And they had that, and everything that creepeth upon the earth. Can I read the counterpart to that in the New Testament? Can I read the counterpart to that in the New Testament? That is God's original word to mankind. Written by God himself. So I'm going to read you the New Testament counterpart, which is our church Bible verse. Beloved, I pray above all things that you would prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospereth. There's not one thing between any of those two verses that contradict each other. They were written about 4,000 years apart. And the reality is what God said. I want you to have dominion sin. He said, I, I, I want you to have dominion again. And I'm going to remind you. And he said, I'm going to have John write it. And I'm going to have the, the gospel of John. The writer of the gospel of John. The writer of the book of Revelation. I'm going to have him write it so you know it's real, not Peter. So he didn't have, I thank God he didn't have Peter write it. But this is John the Revelator. This is, I pray for you. That you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. God says, I want you to have dominion. I want you to have dominion in the start, and I still want you to have dominion today. I haven't changed my mind about it. How many of you want to see your kids succeed? Yes. Look around the room. I don't know where you got that. You see, you need to understand how valuable we are to God. The price God was willing to pay indicated the value of those he redeemed. You are valuable to God. Say, I am valuable, I am valuable to, God. to God. You're so valuable, he sent his son to die for you. Right. You're valuable. My goodness, I am valuable. We are valuable. And what the enemy wants to do is with temptation is come in and devalue you. Devalue your life. Devalue your anointing. Devalue your dominion. Beloved, I, the, the King James is a poor translation. And if you read that in the Greek, it is, beloved, I pray above all things. That thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Do you know that covers every aspect of your life? Yep. Every aspect of your life, body, soul, spirit. So my prayer for you today is, beloved, I pray, and I pray this for you every day, that you would prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. If you don't come on Sunday, I don't pray for you on Monday, though. I just... <laughs> I pray that for this church every day. 
Because I know that is the original commission out of Genesis 126. That God wants us to have his likeness, his image, and his dominion. This is God's heart. The Lord bless you and keep you. Oh, hallelujah. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And God said, if you feel put my holy name on your children, I will seek them because I'm a God of covenant. When I got you, I'm getting them too. If you agree with it, say amen. amen. Tuesday morning, 930, we're in the book of Revelation. Amen. Be here at 930 Tuesday. God bless you. You're dismissed. Hello, one and all. We have been receiving questions regarding where to send tithes and offerings. If you'd like to mail it in, you can do so at P.O. Box 2223, Sholo, Arizona, 85902. And please, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, share, and subscribe. While you're at it, like us on Facebook. Link is in the description. And follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Link is also in the description. Helps out us, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that this is a format you wish to see continue. And with that, we wish you a blessed week.